Experts believe that the Russian economy has kept afloat almost exclusively thanks to the injections of funds from the state budget into certain sectors. In order to constantly increase funding of the military-industrial complex, Moscow has cut spending on other areas of the economy and social protection. High-tech industries were the first to be hit. The production of many goods which were produced at the expense of European technologies has deteriorated. We see that Russia has never built its own aircraft because it was made entirely of imported components. As a result, the planes that are flying now, they break down and have to make emergency landings all the time. The necessary spare parts for repairs are not available. The expansion of arms production did not cause a critical decline in Russian economy. However, state rubles did not ensure the qualitative development of the military-industrial complex. The Kremlin increased mass production, but the result of Western sanctions against the aggressor country was a decline in product quality. Russian military modernization has been set back by 18 years. Now Russia's defense industry strips down bridges for parts. It orders its weapons from the DPRK in violation of multiple resolutions agreed in this chamber. Under this Russian foreign minister's instruction, its purchase and use of Iranian drones involves both states violating a Security Council resolution. James Kariuki, deputy permanent representative of the UK, to the United Nations during a meeting of the UN Security Council. Meanwhile, the resource of state funding is being depleted. Russia's sovereign wealth fund has shrunk considerably, and this is the result of Western sanctions against the Federation's energy sector and ever-increasing spending on the war against Ukraine, experts say. For this year or year and a half, they have spent $100 billion to support their economy. On this basis, the $50 billion that are now left in this fund will be preserved as much as possible, especially given that the sanctions are finally in place for six months to a year now. After that, they will not have financial resources. Of course, China can help, but we know that China also has certain problems today. The Kremlin's desire to continue its war against Ukraine at, at all costs was fatal for the labor market. Some Russians have been sent to the front, hundreds of thousands died, and a significant number of highly qualified specialists have left the country due to fear of mobilization and repression. Labor migrants are also leaving Russia for fear of being sent to war against Ukraine. Most of those who remain are employed in military-industrial complex. The Moscow Times says that according to recent surveys, 86 percent of Russian companies are facing a shortage of personnel. Moscow plans to fill the shortage with migrants from Middle East and Africa. The first 10,000 workers from Kenya will soon arrive to Russia, said the official representative of the state Duma. Russian authorities also propose that pensioners are put back to work. Employees in Russia opened more than 42,000 vacancies for teenagers aged 14 and above in 2023. This is almost three times more than a year before, when there were 14,500 such positions, according to data from the Headhunter Recruitment Service, from the Telegram channel The Moscow Times. The Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade also complains about the mass outflow of qualified personnel. For example, the deficit in manufacturing industry alone is about 660,000 people. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Larisa Zubenko, UATV News.